dam is protected by two spillways. Both have steel drum gates that can be operated manually or automatically. They're raised and lowered depending on water levels in the reservoir and flood conditions. They've only been used twice, once for testing back in 1941, the other because of flooding in 1983. After the spillways were used, engineers found more damage to the concrete linings and underlying rock both times. The Hoover Dam sits wedged into Black Canyon, straddling the Nevada-Arizona border like a colossal wall of concrete that has held back the Colorado River since the 1930s. For nearly a century, it has symbolized both American engineering brilliance and human audacity, an attempt to bend a wild river to human will. At 726 feet tall, wider at its base than two football fields laid end to end, and filled with enough concrete to pave a highway from Seattle to Miami, the dam looks immovable, eternal. Yet behind its massive curved wall sits Lake Mead, a reservoir so vast it can store nearly 10 trillion gallons at full capacity. Even today, at a reduced volume of around 3.5 trillion gallons, Lake Mead is still the largest reservoir in the United States. And when people ask what would happen if the Hoover Dam were to collapse, the answers carry an apocalyptic weight. To imagine the collapse is to imagine the unleashing of all that stored water at once. The sheer volume is almost incomprehensible. Trillions of gallons surging forward with nowhere to go but downriver. A wall of liquid energy exploding through Black Canyon, tearing away the dam's remains, and racing into the desert valleys of Arizona, Nevada, and California. Hydrologists estimate that if all 3.5 trillion gallons were suddenly released, the water could cover 10 million acres a foot deep, an area larger than the entire state of New Jersey. Within minutes, downstream towns would be drowned. Laughlin, Nevada would be the first to go. The casinos and hotels swept away under a torrent of brown water. Needles, California would follow, then Lake Havasu City, home to the transplanted London Bridge, now standing in the path of a catastrophe it was never meant to face. Yuma, Arizona, Arizona, farther south, would see the river rise above its banks, submerging homes, roads, and farmland, while across the border in Mexico, San Luis Rio, Colorado would be engulfed. The Mojave National Preserve would be swamped, and the ancient dry Salton Sea Basin could once again fill with floodwaters, echoing the pre damned days when the Colorado routinely spilled into California's deserts. The loss of life would be staggering. The towns and cities along the river housed tens of thousands of people, many with no time to evacuate. Three Native American reservations lie along the Colorado's course, their lands and communities facing destruction. With no warning, the rush of water would overwhelm anyone in its path, from families in riverside homes to tourists vacationing in desert resorts. Roads would vanish under the flood, bridges would snap, and power lines would crumple. The dam's collapse would be one of the deadliest man-made disasters in American history. Yet even those spared the flood waters would not escape the fallout. More than 25 million people rely on Lake Mead for water, including the entire metropolitan area of Las Vegas. 90% of Vegas's drinking water comes from that reservoir. Without the dam, the city's taps would run dry, its fountains and casinos silenced, its population thrust into a crisis that no amount of neon could disguise. Henderson, Boulder City, and North Las Vegas would face the same fate, along with sprawling suburbs that depend on the Colorado's diverted flow. Beyond Nevada, the water travels through canals and pipelines to southern California and Arizona, feeding both cities and farms. The Imperial Valley of California, a desert transformed into a billion dollar breadbasket by irrigation from the Colorado River, would be devastated. More than half a million acres of farmland producing fruits and vegetables would wither without their lifeblood of water. The Imperial Valley alone generates billions in agricultural revenue each year. But without Hoover Dam's regulation, its irrigation canals would collapse into chaos. Before the dam's construction, this land was barren and with the dam gone, it would return to desert. Crops would die, farms would shudder, food prices across the country could spike as one of America's most productive agricultural regions was lost. Electricity would be another casualty. Hoover Dam was not built only to tame the river. It was built to power the West. Its turbines spin out an average of 4 billion kilowatt hours of hydroelectric power annually, enough to serve 1.3 million people in Nevada, Arizona, and California. That power doesn't just light home homes, it drives industry, cools cities in scorching desert heat, and stabilizes the region's electrical grid. A collapse would wipe out this supply instantly, plunging cities into blackouts at the very moment when chaos was already spreading from the floods. The financial losses would be incalculable, with businesses shuttered, hospitals scrambling for backup generators, and millions left without reliable electricity. 
the broader consequences would ripple outward. The Hoover Dam was designed not only as a dam, but as a system of control, regulating the unpredictable Colorado River and guaranteeing water allocations under interstate agreements. Its failure would shatter those agreements. States that have battled in court for decades over water rights, California, Arizona, Nevada, would be thrown into new conflicts as the very system that apportioned the river was gone. Mexico, guaranteed a share of the river under treaty, would face both floods and sudden drought. The political fallout could rival the physical devastation, as millions demanded solutions that did not exist. But what could actually cause such a collapse? The dam was built to last, anchored deep into bedrock with walls hundreds of feet thick. Engineers have long maintained that a sudden catastrophic failure is nearly impossible outside of deliberate sabotage. A massive terrorist attack, an extraordinary natural disaster such as a mega earthquake, or catastrophic human error would be required. More likely than collapse is the possibility of slow decline. Decades of drought have already reduced Lake Mead to just 30% of its capacity. If the reservoir drops too low, Hoover Dam's turbines cannot generate power. Below an elevation of 1,050 feet, the lake enters dead pool status. Water no longer flows through the dam at all. That scenario would not produce floods, but it would cripple power generation and cut off water for millions. A disaster of a different kind. A slow motion collapse rather than a single apocalyptic wave. The specter of failure, sudden or gradual, forces us to confront how dependent modern life in the American Southwest is on this single piece of infrastructure. After the spillways were used, engineers found more damage to the concrete linings and underlying rock both times. Las Vegas, a city of lights in the desert, exists only because of Hoover Dam. Phoenix and Tucson drink the water it releases. Los Angeles draws sustenance from the Colorado's regulated flow. Without the dam, the modern map of the American West would look nothing like it does today. The Hoover Dam is not just concrete and steel, it is the spine of civilization across a vast region. Its collapse would not simply flood towns and cities, it would unravel the delicate balance of water food, power, and politics across multiple states and even into Mexico. To imagine Hoover Dam's collapse is to imagine the unraveling of nearly a century of engineering triumph. The water would roar through Black Canyon like a beast long caged, sweeping aside everything built in its path. Towns would drown, farms would turn to dust, and cities would go dark. Millions would be left homeless, powerless, and thirsty in some of the harshest desert landscapes on Earth. It is a nightmare scenario so immense that it is almost beyond comprehension. And yet the dam still stands, a curved wall of concrete holding back trillions of gallons, its turbines still humming, its shadow still cast across Lake Mead. Its endurance so far has been a testament to the ingenuity of those who built it. But in the age of climate change, dwindling reservoirs, and new threats, the haunting question lingers. What if?